Hello everyone, uh, in this video we're going to talk about uh, continuous time impulse function and the continuous time step function. Um, the continuous time impulse function has a symbol of delta of t and the continuous time unit step function has a symbol of u of t. Um, let's talk about the continuous time impulse function first. Um, if, I'm, if I say how to plot this, I'm going to plot it like that. Um, we'll have an impulse of height 1 at origin and the independent axis is t whereas if I'm asked to plot the unit step function it's going to do something like this so it's 0 for it's and the u of t is 0 for all, all negative values of t and it's 1 for all positive values of t so by definition the u of t could be defined as 1 for t greater than 0 and 0 for t less than 0 whereas the delta of t can be defined as uh, 1 for t equals to 0 and it's 0 for non-zero values of t. Now that we have the definition of continuous time impulse and continuous time step function we would like to know if we can find a relationship between these two functions um, so I'm going to write the answer first and I'm going to explain them later on. So um, u of t is related to this impulse like this. It's integral from minus infinity delta of tau d tau and delta of tau which is impulse can be written in terms of um, this step as a derivative of u of t. Um, there is one more definition for u of t and that is um, delta of t minus uh, sigma d of sigma where sigma goes from 0 to infinity. So these are the two definitions available for u of t and that's the definition um, or mathematical expression for delta of t in terms of u of t. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove, I'm going to tell you guys how is that expression u of t first and then I'll tell you guys how is that u of t of and then once we are done with this um, then we'll talk about this expression. So to prove this statement uh, let's plot uh, this function delta of tau. So that's delta of tau. Um, it has a height of 1 at tau equal to 0. Now what's happening um, in this part of expression is, let me write it over here again, delta of tau d tau minus infinity to t. What's happening in this expression is that we are summing this function from tau equals to minus infinity to t. So I'm not sure what the value of t is as of yet. So let's just think of t as a negative number in the first case. So for the first case, let's think of t as a negative number. And if t is a negative number, then it's going to lie somewhere behind this zero. So it's going to, let's say, t is over here. Now, to evaluate this function for this t, for this case, where t is less than zero, we have to sum the function value from minus infinity till t. So we have to sum the function value from minus infinity till t. And this function value, and the function has a value of zero throughout this range, so that sum is going to result into zero for t less than zero. Now let's take another case where t happens to be greater than zero. So in the second case, we'll have t greater than zero that's in blue and if t is greater than 0 then it's going to lie ahead of this 0 so let's say t is over here so we have to sum to evaluate this expression we have to sum this function from tau equal to minus infinity to t where t is greater than 0 so we have to sum from minus infinity till t and we have to sum all the values of this function and the function has a value of 0 everywhere apart from this 0 uh, tau equal to 0 
with the function is a value as one, and then it gets to zero again. Now the summation says, or the integral says that I have to add all the values of this function. So if I add all the values of this function, which is zero, 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 and then one plus zero, 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 I'm gonna get an answer of one for t greater than zero. So this expression results into this answer, and guess what that is? That's the definition of u of t. So now that we have proved this statement that u of t is actually equal to integral of delta tau where tau goes from minus infinity to t over there, which is written over here. So let me prove now the next statement of u of t, which is delta of t minus sigma d sigma and the sigma goes from 0 to infinity. To understand this thing, let's again use figures. So I have to plot delta of t first. So that's delta of t. Now if we see at the limits that the value of sigma is going to go from 0 till infinity. So if if sigma is 0, I'm going to get delta of t, which is over here. And when the sigma takes on next value in the continuous range, I'm going to get another impulse, another impulse, another impulse. All these impulse will be closely or infinitesimally close. And we then we have to add them together, as suggested by this integral. And if we add them, we are going to get an answer of um, this which actually is u of t. So I hope it makes sense to you guys. Now let's try to prove the next relationship between u of t and delta of t that is the impulse is nothing but a derivative of a step function. Um, now there's one issue here that we cannot find a derivative of discontinuous function. So let me write it over here. We cannot find, or we cannot derivate derivative of discontinuous function. Now why I'm saying that? I'm saying it because u of t which I have plot looks like this and it has a discontinuity at t equal to 0. So this function has a discontinuity at t equal to 0. So because this function is discontinuous we can't really find its derivative so the question arises then what do we do? Well, um, there is one explanation for it. And that is think of this unit step function as some kind of a voltage source. Um, so you have a voltage source that starts at giving one volt right at t equal to zero the moment you turn it on. Now that's practically not possible. If you have a voltage source and if you turn it on to get one volt, it takes and you start at t equal to 0, it takes some time to get to 1 and then it gets to 1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label this function as u of delta t where delta is the time that this uh, voltage source or signal takes to get to the maximum value of 1. And if that delta is very small, I will be very close to this u of t. So we can say that as delta goes to zero, u delta of t becomes u of t. Now this function is not discontinuous, so we can find its derivative. And if I'm asked to find its derivative, that's going to look something like this. Well, remember that the derivative of a function is nothing but the slope of a function and the slope of this function at this interval from 0 to delta is 1 by delta and the slope of the function after the delta till infinity is 0. So the slope of function is going to be 1 by delta till delta and then it gets to 0 and it's 0 here as well. I'm going to call this function as uh, small delta of delta. Now you'll be wondering why I'm calling this delta and delta, this one delta as well. So remember this is a small delta and this is a capital delta just like small a and capital A in English. Um, 
So I'm going to call this thing as a delta of delta. And uh, we can observe that the area under this curve is 1 by delta times delta which is 1. Now if I reduce this value of delta, the width of this impulse is going to get shrinked and the height of this impulse is going to get expanded. So as I increase delta, I'm going to get, sorry, if I, as I decrease delta, I'm going to get a rather narrow bar which is a bit higher and higher and so on and so forth. But the area of this um, pulse is always going to be 1 because these two functions are going to increase and decrease by the same rate. So we can end as and if I get this delta to be infinitesimally small then that thing is going to become a delta of t. So um, we have established a fact that if I actually apply the limit on this function, this limit, I'm going to get delta of t. So now let me uh, summarize everything that I've done so far and that's that the delta of delta t is equal to the derivative of u of delta t and if I remember these two definitions, this one and that one over here and if I apply limits on both sides I'm going to end up delta of t here and I'm going to end up with um, d by dt u of t so we have made, we have done the proof so that's the proof of relationship between um, u of t and delta of t hope it makes sense to you guys if there is something unclear still remain unclear just leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you Thank you for listening.